Well, here we are. If you are new to Texas, this is property tax season. It's the time when we get a letter in the mail from our county tax assessor telling us how they're going to assess our home for the upcoming tax bill that will come out this fall. In the last few years, this has been a huge topic of conversation, and I have received countless requests for more information. Last year, I even interviewed the Rockwall County assessor as part of a larger conversation around a bill that was on the ballot, but he also gave great tips on protesting your tax taxes, and I'm bringing those highlights back for you to use. So this year, in this property tax protest video, I am reviewing what you need to know, but also providing the tips given by a tax assessor on how to protest your taxes. And be sure to stick around to the end where I will tell you how you can get your detailed step-by-step -step guide to help you through the tax protest process. So let's start with some definitions. On your appraisal notice, you are going to see something called your market value and another number for your assessed value. The market value is the value the county appraisal district places on your property for the tax year. The other definition to know is your assessed value. Your assessed value is the amount that you are actually getting taxed on. Some people have the same market value and assessed value. Others don't. You pay taxes based on your assessed value. If you have a homestead exemption on your property, then your market value and assessed value value are likely different. So let's talk homestead exemptions. You can now file for homestead exemptions at any time. It used to be that you could only file at the beginning of the following year after you moved in. The homestead exemption in Texas has two portions. The first is the exemption portion. This is a portion of the value that comes off your assessed value before they apply the tax rate to it. School districts are mandated to give a $100,000 exemption from the assessed value. In addition, different counties in Texas may offer more exemptions. You can also apply for a 65 or older exemption, a disability exemption, and a military veteran 100% disability exemption. The second portion of the homestead exemption is the homestead exemption cap. This is a limitation on the assessed value of 10% over the prior year's value. So if last year you were assessed on a value of $300,000, then this year you can only be assessed on a value of up to $330,000. This cap does not apply unless you have been in the property for a full calendar year. Now, if you still need to file your homestead exemption and would like to, the completed application and required documentation are due by April 30th of the tax year for which you're applying. A late resident's homestead exemption application, however, may be filed up to two years after the delinquency date, which is usually February 1st. So contact your local appraisal district for more information on filing your homestead exemption. I'll have a link to that homestead exemption form in the episode description. And don't ever pay to get that filed. There are scammers out there who will charge you to file your homestead exemption for you, but it is so simple to do yourself. All right, so we have gone through some of the definitions. Now let's walk through how the county assessor looks at properties. First, they group like properties together, so they're not going to compare a million-dollar property to a $350,000 property. They're going to stay within neighborhoods and subdivisions that are alike and similar. They'll pull together all the sales data they can and analyze that. That includes looking at the Texas A&M Real Estate Research website. They'll analyze what properties sold for in 2023 versus the appraised values they had listed for those properties in a study called a ratio study. And based on the result of that ratio study, that determines how values will go up or down for that specific area and property type. Now, the appraisal district may get it wrong, and this is why you are allowed to protest your assessed value. And believe it or not, there is actually an incentive for the appraisal district to get this right. Every two years, the Texas Comptroller performs a property value study. This is where they compile sales for a county from their data sources, and they will do a random test sample of properties. They'll take a look at the appraised values of the county and compare it to what they sold for, and the county has has to be within 95% to 105% of that ratio. If the assessor is not within that range and the county fails the study, well, then the schools could actually lose some funding. Now that you know all of this, how do you actually go about protesting your market value. Remember, we have market values at one level and assessed values at another level. When you're deciding to protest, you have to determine if the market value, the only value you can protest, should be less than the assessed value that you're being taxed on. Now, if there are no comps or evidence to prove the market value should be less than the assessed value, it will not change your taxed amount. The target date of the appraisal district is to determine the value of the house as it sits on January 1 of this year. So that would be January 1, 2024 for the 2024 notice of appraised value. 
According to an interview I did with Rockwall County's chief appraiser, Kevin Passens, they will typically look at sales from January 1 of the previous year all the way to even sometimes February of the current year. They want to get as big of a snapshot as possible. Many counties now have the option to protest your value informally online. You'll need to follow the directions that were sent with your notice of appraised value or contact your assessor directly for that link. Usually that option will allow you to input your suggestions suggested assessed value. And here's where you are going to have to do a little bit of homeowner homework because you cannot just write in any number. There has to actually be a methodology as to how you came to that number. Now, the process starts by compiling all the evidence you can to show the appraisal district why your value is incorrect. This is where knowing surrounding sales comps comes in handy. You will wanna reach out to your real estate agent to get these comps. If you don't have a realtor you're working with, then you will need to do a little more digging. You can go to a resource like homes.com, to look up recent sales of homes similar to yours. Now, you'll wanna make sure you're looking at homes that sold in 2023. Keep your search to homes in your neighborhood, to homes similar in size to yours, similar in bedroom and bathroom count. A good rule of thumb is to stay within a 10% range of your current home size. Now, once you get a list of recently sold homes, then go to your central appraisal district website and start typing in those addresses so you can see how the county is assessing their property for the year. Then you will make your adjustments. Take a look at the pictures online from when it was listed last year. Are there things about that home that would give a higher value to that home as opposed to yours? Be sure to document all of the differences that would support your home having a lower value. Save photos of comparable properties and provide photos of your own home to show the difference. Are you located in a less desirable lot than the surrounding homes? Are there things wrong with your home outside of normal depreciation, like a broken AC, a bad foundation, or a roof in need of replacement? Those are things you can bring up to the assessor in a protest. If you have estimates for work needed, that will help your case even more. Now review the details of your home on the tax records. Is your home size correct? Is there an error in any of the details of your home that might result in a lower valuation, such as an incorrect garage size, property size, or even additional buildings listed for the property that are no longer on the property? Those are things you will want to protest. And if you like, you can go to TexasHomeTaxes.com to get our detailed guide on protesting your taxes along with a suggested checklist to help you with your protest and answers to frequently asked questions. And speaking of frequently asked questions, here are some of the most asked questions and answers. One, how can there be such a wild swing among neighbors and just in values in general? Well, Texas is a non-disclosure state, meaning what you paid for your house is not a matter of public record. So the appraisal district does not have all of the sales data. They actually do this thing when you move in where they're going to send you a letter and they'll ask what you paid for that house. Now, I would hold off on providing that information on what you paid unless it's lower than your new market value they assess you at. Next question. How quickly do you need to protest your assessed value? You have until May 15th to protest your value, or if your notice hasn't been mailed by April 15th, you have 30 days after the date it was mailed to protest. Next question. If I purchased last year, are we able to protest using what we paid for the house? The quick answer is yes, but I cannot guarantee the outcome. This actually happened to me. I bought a house as a builder spec, and when the notice arrived, it was for more than my purchase price. I provided my closing statement as evidence of my purchase price and was able to get the value lowered. However, I have heard other people try this and say that they were not as successful. It may be because they bought earlier or later in the year, or there was a substantial market change for that area after their purchase that would put less weight on their purchase price. Another consideration is that since the appraisal district is making a value determination on the property as of January 1 for this year, they might consider your purchase price as just one of the data points for the valuation, but also include other properties to see the average for the area. And if you are not successful with an informal protest, you can always request a hearing in front of the appraisal review board to have them review your case and you provide your evidence. Another question. I protested last year as 
my square footage was wrong. The response was that the square footage includes the brick. This is odd because our floor plan lists 4,161 square feet versus 4,363 square feet on the CAD site. A lot of times when the appraisal district gets the property size, it's from the plans that were submitted to them to get a permit for the build job. No one has actually come out and measured your house. And sometimes what's built does not 100% line up with the plan. So there can be a discrepancy. But apparently this comes up a lot because there was an article on the Texas Association of Realtors website that said an appraisal district measures the exterior dimensions outside of a home, outside of the veneer. They round each measurement sometimes to the nearest foot before calculating the area. So if you've got each measurement rounding up to the nearest foot, that can start increasing your size pretty quickly. Now, an appraiser will actually round to the nearest nth or tenth of a foot and round only the final calculated square footage to the nearest foot. So that's how you can get a bit of a discrepancy with this number from an actual appraiser to the appraisal district. Another question submitted, can I use the value estimator on the Zillow app or another online estimator to protest my assessed value? Well, I guess you could try it, but I have not heard of any appraisal review board using estimated values from online sources as evidence to support a reduction in assessed value. Online tools like that go off big data. They're using an algorithm and they're looking at current asking prices and time on market and all sorts of variables to determine a value. And a lot of these provide a range that can swing pretty wildly. The reason this is so unreliable goes back to the previous point I made about Texas being a non-disclosure state. When you buy or sell a house, the actual sales price is not made public. So these online data aggregators just do not have the actual information. It's just a best guess. And that's why I don't think appraisal review boards will use that as evidence. Next question. If I lower my market value with the appraisal district, will that affect my ability to sell my home if I want to sell it later this year? Absolutely not. Your assessed value with the appraisal district has absolutely nothing to do with what an appraiser who was hired by a buyer will appraise your house for. A buyer's appraiser is going to look at actual sales data for homes right around yours, and they get access to the actual sales data, unlike the appraisal district. They'll also look at sales that happen just within about three months of your home going under contract, whereas the appraisal district is going all the way back to the beginning of 2023. In our industry, it is pretty much general knowledge that there can be a wild swing between your property tax assessed value and your actual sales price. So if you are working with a realtor or if the buyers are working with a realtor, this is something that actually very rarely comes up because it's known not to be an apples to apples appraisal. If it were me, I would still work to lower my taxes if the comps support it. Next question. I bought my home last year and the appraisal district has assessed my home for my sales price. Can I still get the value lowered? Quick answer is maybe. And there's an underlying answer to all of these questions, and that is to go ahead and try and protest if you have any reason to do so. The board reviewing your case may decide that your purchase price is adequate justification for your value and leave it at that, or they may consider other sales. I kind of touched on this with one of the earlier questions. Since the appraisal district is making a determination of value on the property as of January 1 of this year, they might consider your purchase price as just one of the data points for the valuation, but also include other properties properties to get the area average. So go ahead and try it out. Next question. Why is my form not actually showing me what I will pay in taxes? Well, the reason you won't see the amount of your actual taxes due is because tax rates have not been set for the year. Now, we don't generally see a large change in tax rates, so you can probably make a good guess based on the rate you paid last year as to what you'll pay this year. Before the property tax process, this step is all about establishing your home's value for the sake of taxation. So when taxes are assessed, that's the value they'll be assessed against. So right now, you're just getting a statement that basically says, hey, here's what we're assessing your property as far as an overall property value with your land and improvements included. But in October, you will get a final bill that says, hey, remember when we established what your property was worth earlier this year? Well, now here's the bill. Okay, so it doesn't exactly say it like that, but you get the point. And that letter in October will show you all of the entities that are levying a tax against your property, like the school, local hospital, community college, public improvement district, all sorts of possibilities in Texas. We have a lot of potential taxing entities and not all areas have the same ones. 
You can even have different tax rates in neighboring communities. So you'll get that actual bill in October and you will have all of October, November, December, and even the first part of January to pay that bill. And now if you haven't paid by January 31st, then you'll start getting penalties for non-payment. Next question. My form shows that the market value of our home last year was $60,000, and now it's over $400,000. Based on last year's tax rate, we are going to increase almost $8,000 this year in taxes. What happened? Okay, I know exactly what happened. You bought a new construction home. But at the time of closing, many times the appraisal district's documentation only has a taxable value of the unimproved land amount, which in this case would have been $60,000. And the title company who prorates the taxes has to rely on the data provided by the appraisal district. This is also what your lender relies on for your escrow setup. So unless you tell your lender to calculate your escrow based on improved value, you are going to be in for a shocking letter from your lender when they run an escrow analysis on your account. So to be clear, no one did anything wrong in this process. It's just a part of buying a new home that unfortunately not everyone talks about up front. And now you are becoming aware of the true cost of owning that home. So what happens next is that your lender will pay the full amount of the tax bill they get in October of this year. Subsequently, at the beginning of 2025, you will get an escrow analysis letter from your lender. This letter will tell you that you have an underfunded escrow account and that you need to make up the difference. But not only will you need to make up the difference, you will have to pay even more to bring that escrow cushion back up so the money is there at the end of next year to make that larger tax payment. This can actually result in a huge monthly change in your mortgage payment. I've had people tell me stories of their payment going up 40% to make up the difference. So if you see this discrepancy now, start saving. Because another option you'll have when you receive this escrow analysis letter is to make a lump sum payment to bring the escrow account back up to the level the lender requires. Requires. And the more you can pay upfront, the less your monthly mortgage payment will go up next year. I hope you have found this video helpful, especially if you're new to Texas. A lot of this can come as a bit of a surprise. The big takeaways are to first go get that guide to help you in protesting your taxes at texashometaxes.com. Second, contact your local appraisal office for questions and help. They will help you through this process. And just in case there are any questions about anything I'm saying here, I will add this disclaimer. If you would like to protest your assessed value, you will need to follow the instructions on your notice from the appraisal district or go to your appraisal district's website. I cannot guarantee any results from the information I'm providing you. I am not a property tax professional, nor am I a licensed appraiser. I am I'm just providing you with a consolidated source of information that has been curated from various websites, interviews, personal experience, and feedback from other people who have protested and told me about their experience. This is not legal advice or advice specific to your situation, and you should consult your appraisal district directly with any questions or requests for specific advice regarding your property. Who? And if we have not met yet, I am Jennifer Shannon. I am a realtor and broker associate with the Crest Edge Group at Keller Williams. You can reach out to me directly by phone or text to 214-803-4444 or start with an email to me at jshannon at kw.com. And if you found this video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more real estate tips, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. Well, that is all I have for now. I will see you in the next video. Bye.